the last little step that we need to do to finish up our dashboard here is take that information from the response and just pass it on or create some dumb elements and uh, put it onto this profile page in that la so we've now that we've got that response we can put a conditional here we can say if response is okay and we can then do some work and then what we want to do here is we're going to use some object destructuring and we're going to say we're going to set a constant we're going to grab hold of that user from our response and that's going to come from the response.json method that we can make use of here. So let's just put a debugger here and see what we get. Hit save. You can see the request was made, but nothing happened. And if we take a look at our console, you can see we got a 403. So let's just do a fresh login here. Now we can see that we, we hit this conditional block. If we take a look at the user, you can see we got the email ID name.first and name.last. So that's looking good. I'm going to hit play here to continue. And in our code, uh, let's just now what we want to do is take this user information and then attach it onto the DOM. So we take a look at our profile.html. We have this class user information or user info, sorry. So let's just grab a hold of that. We can set, create a constant here and we can call that const user info. We can say document dot get element. And let's say let's use the get element by class name method. And then we can just reference the user info class that we we just took a look at now and the next thing we need to do is let's create some dom elements for each one of the pieces of information we want to display so let's create a constant called first name then we can say document dot create element and then we'll just use a p tag here or a paragraph and then once we've got that created we can reference first name dot in a text and then we'll sign the value of that to be we'll use some string interpolation here we'll say first name and then we'll just pass in user dot name dot first and then we can do the exact same thing for the last name so we can just breeze through this really quickly we can say document dot create element this will also be a paragraph or a p tag so we'll say last name dot in a text but then that will be and we'll just assign that to the value that we get back from our response. So we'll say user.name.last. Lastly, in the same vein, let's just do the same thing for email. So we'll say document.createElement. This will also be a p tag. It's going to scroll up to give us some space. Say email.inatText. We can use the same strategy with the string interpolation and we'll just say user.email right and we have done quite a bit of typing here but just a little bit more to go uh, we got hold of the user info uh, kind of box that we're using to store that information we've created elements for each piece of information and so now we can just reference this user info uh, dom element then we can just say user info and then we can use this append child method and then that will take in the first name we can just do the exact same thing for all three. We can use the pen child and that'll be last name. And then last D, just very quickly, we can say a pen child and then put it in that email. I think the last thing we just need to do here is in the case where the response is not okay, let's just handle that with an else condition. And then we'll just destructure the message that we get back from the API. And that'll be using the response.json and then we can simply throw a new message or we can throw a new error rather and pass in that message and that will be caught by our alert over here and you see as I click save there you'll see we get this access denied and that's because we just those those cookies are expired so we've got that 403 forbidden feel free to to go ahead and change the time that the cookies are or the expiration date or time on the cookies if you want to just lengthen that for testing purposes and that's why we, we keep getting this but yeah just that's something that we we're going to be using i just set it short so that we can simulate them being expired and we've got access denied and everything's okay so that's cool that sends us back to the the login form and that's great because then we can just simulate a new login and then just pass in those details and then i'm going to click login here you can see we get this error failed to load profile user info.append child is not a function and that's most likely because we're not grabbing hold of this DOM element uh, correctly. And so I'm just going to change this 
method here, we're going to say get element by ID. And then I'm going to switch this up in here instead of it being a class. I'm going to change this to ID. And then let's just click save. And like you can see, we're getting those access denied errors. And then let's just re -log in. Once I fix that little JavaScript error, you can see that we make a successful user request to the API. We get back the user information and then it gets successfully appended to the DOM. We've got first name here, which is John. Last name is Smith. And then the email address is just in the dashboard. And so let's just... If I refresh this page now, it's going to try and make the API request again. And you can see that's when we get that, that 304 because basically it's a, it's a 200. It's a successful error. It's just the browser's kind of like cached the response because nothing has changed. And so there's no need to, to refetch the information. And so if we just go to the application here and then delete these cookies, just to test one more time, if I refresh here, you'll see we get access denied. It kicks us back to the login. And I think at this point in time, we have finished the, the course. We've made a lot of progress. We've done those integrations into the login, the register, and now the user endpoint, just to simulate that, that user authentication flow, as well as getting access to a protected endpoint and displaying it on a private page on a front end. The front end was very basic and simple, but it's just an example to see what it looks like. In more modern applications, you would use React or Angular for this kind of thing. And that could be possibly a future topic for a new course and a new set of tutorials where we can take a deeper dive into authentication with stuff like Google authentication, Facebook, and other passport strategies, and maybe a more interesting front end application and integration that we do. So for now, that's the end of this whole course. Thank you very much if you made it this, this far. I hope that you've learned a lot.